Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, I'm definitely Mitch, and I'm coming in again from the Commander's Quarters studio. Today we're going to be breaking the bank on a deck tech that was about imposters. Today's episode comes to your courtesy of Andrew, who's been supporting this channel as a golden pig to your patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Andrew. And if you haven't seen Andrew's deck tech on Sakashima the Imposter, make sure you check that out first. Because this is a break the bank for Sakashima, this is going to make a lot more sense if you've already seen that episode. But, assuming that you've seen that episode and the things that I'm saying right now are very irrelevant to you, let's move on. The Sakashima deck tech focused on cloning, stealing, and copying our opponent's things. And with this break the bank, we can upgrade some of the cards to make the deck even more effective at doing that. So with our upgraded budget, let's start off by talking about what's in. First up, let's upgrade some of the mana rocks with Soul Ring, Warren Power Stone, and Thran Dynamo. These mana rocks are incredibly efficient, and the fact that they don't tap for a color really isn't that big of a deal for a monocolor deck. Typically, my rule of thumb is that you want a mana rock that taps for at least half the mana that you put into it, and each of these do even better than that. Next up, we've got three mana rocks that cost two and tap for exactly half, with Sky Diamond, Arcane Signet, and Felwar Stone. In my opinion, turn two is the most important turn when it comes to ramp, so these can be crucial in this deck. Another card that we're going to be adding in is Cage Sun, and when it comes into play, we're going to choose blue. That means that creatures that we control that are blue get plus one plus one, and then on top of that, whenever a land's ability causes us to add one or more blue mana, we get to add an additional blue. So this can pump some of our creatures, but more importantly, it doubles up the effectiveness of all of our islands. But now let's move on to some theft effects that can be incredibly powerful with Thieving Skydiver, Kaiga the Tidestar, and Agent of Treachery. Thieving Skydiver can be a huge tempo play for us by stealing an artifact early. If one of our opponents has a Soul Ring out, we're going to be the proud owners of a Soul Ring for just 3 mana. This can be a huge early play and really get us ahead. Even just stealing a typical mana rock for 4 mana can be a big swing as well. But then Kaiga the Tidestar can be absolutely devastating with this deck. It says when it dies, we gain control of target creature. The thing with this deck is, though, we've got a ton of clone effects. So by cloning Kaiga, we create a copy of Kaiga, and because they're both legendary, we can sacrifice the clone. When clone Kaiga dies, we get that death trigger, and we get to steal a creature permanently. So instead of just cloning our opponent's creatures, we can just take them with this in play. And then Agent of Treachery is similar, but it also can provide us card advantage. When it enters the battlefield, we gain control of target permanent. In the beginning of our end step, if we control three or more permanents we don't own, we draw three cards. So instead of just cloning our opponent's things, we just clone Agent of Treachery and we steal their things. And then we draw a ton of cards. Next up, let's add in Desertion, which is a fantastic counter spell. Because if the spell that we countered was an artifact or creature spell, we get it instead of it going to the graveyard. So this can be a big swing depending on what was cast. And then Blatant Thievery is a great way to just take whatever we want from each player. It says for each opponent, gain control of target permanent and that player controls. So this can be a great way to get ahead early or a fantastic way to finish off our opponents late. And Rite of Application can help us out in both scenarios as well. It says put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target creature, but if it was kicked, we get five of those tokens instead. And five tokens of the best creature on board can be devastating. On top of spells, though, we're also going to be upgrading some of our lands with Castle Vantress, Minamo, and Mystic Sanctuary. Castle Vantress helps us scry, Minamo helps us untap target legendary permanent, and the Mystic Sanctuary can bring us back an instant or sorcery from our graveyard and put it on top of our library. Next up, Teleri West might come into play tapped and only tap for a blue, but it also has transmute for one blue blue. So essentially when we do that, we discard it and then tutor for anything with a converted mana cost of zero. So essentially we can go get whatever utility land that we need for the situation that we're in. Next up there's Terrain Generator which can tap for a color, so we can pay 2 to tap and put a basic land from our hand into play tapped. So it's a land that can actually help us ramp pretty effectively with this stack. And then with Arcane Lighthouse we can pay 1 and tap it and until end of turn, creature our opponent's control lose Hexproof and Shroud and can't have Hexproof or Shroud. So it's a great way to help us deal with and target some of our opponent's things. And finally there's Mirror which is a fantastic utility land for a copy or clone deck. By paying 2 in a colorless and tapping and sacrificing it, we can copy target insert sorcery spell, we control, and we can choose new targets for the copy. And then by paying 4 in a colorless and tapping and sacrificing it, we can put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target creature we control. So this utility land might come to play tapped, but it can help us out in a lot of situations. But now that we've put some cards in, we've got to take some out, so it's time to move on to what's out. First up, let's take out our mana dorks with Hedron Crawler, Mannequin, and Palladium Mirror. When upgrading our ramp package, these are the first to go as mana rocks are much safer than mana dorks. And we're also going to be removing Urgolem's Eye, Sisei's Ring, and Hedron Archive because again, we just have more effective ramp spells. 
And for the same reason, we're also removing Dreamstone Hedron. These aren't bad ramp spells by any means, but with our upgraded budget, we can just add in better ones. And then let's take out some of our theft effects with Mind Control, Entrancing Melody, and Dominate. Each of these can be effective, but they are one-shot effects. And with our upgrades, we're adding in some more powerful effects that can get us even more value. And because of that, we're also going to be taking out Confiscate, Volition Range, and Kepnet's Last Word. These can be effective in the right situation, but they can definitely set us back as well. The cards that we're adding in are safer and more powerful. And because we're adding in some lands, we've got to take some out as well, so let's take out Seven Islands. But now that we've gone over the cards, let's see how our deck stacks up when it comes to price. The average EDH Rex Sakashima deck is going to set you back $415.54. Even with all of our upgrades, our deck is still going to be cheaper, coming in at $99.73. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on these upgrades are. And again, this is definitely mint. No reason for you not to think that this is mint. Anyways, thanks again and see you next time.